Now that I've kept you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, Mrs. Ryan? God, yeah. Push in the button. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, indeed. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. Yes. Right, get this situated here. There Welcome we back. go. Hi, guys. What's happening? Crazy. You look lovely. Thank you so much. You I just noticed your McQueen shirt, your Hunziger McQueen shirt. Yes, I've been covered up in a sweatshirt until now. Oh, that's it is, yeah. Well, that's yeah. nice. All right, it's cold in the studio, and you're going with it? Going with it. All right, good for you. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Today is Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans, and this is It's Tonight's Show. Tonight's guest is a fella named Bob Zaney. He's a comedian. I knew that. He's been a broadcaster. I didn't know that. We're going to find out all sorts of other things about Lots him. radio. Yeah. And, and I don't believe any connection with the Zanies, plural, <laughs> comedy, clubs. I don't believe, so, but we'll probably talk about that, too. Uh, anyway, Bob Zaney is here today. And he'll be in here in just a few minutes. Mrs. Ryan. Yes. We know you look good. How you feeling? Uh, or anything else. How you doing today? I'm fine. I'm... You look... I mean, you really look fabulous to me. I think your whole outfit is coordinated color-wise and everything. You just look adorable. I, I Yeah, my brain's on today. That yeah. really is what it comes down to. Well, I have makes, MS. I'll just say it again. Yeah. <laughs> For first first time watchers, <laughs> Mrs. Ryan has so multiple sclerosis. So everyone knows sclerosis. I'm not just crazy. <laughs> That's why we check in so often because it's a good days and bad days kind of thing. Yeah, this is a better day. It's a, I've acclimated a little bit. Good for you. About How was your morning? Time. Productive. Ah, that always helps me keep yeah. my head on, mm -hmm. staying active, get the synapses firing. Yes. And then having a guest come in and push your buttons, that helps too, right off I the bat. I love comedians. Comedians <laughs> I know. are amazing. I Their brains you. are so good. I came around the corner, you were brightened <laughs> up like you used to be, you know, when you used to be working and stuff. And it's so nice to see you in that element. Thanks. Uh, anyway, I have not much to do today other than we have to wrap up the uh, East Coast feed stuff. Remember that okay. from yesterday? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suspense. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, so let's check in real quick. Go back to, I think we're in Danbury. I don't know where we are. But we're back on the East Coast, checking in with Danbury Chive and the East Coast feed. Roll it hell. Hey, Steve, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's a real dog. Brooke is seeing a real dog. We're at the movie theater, and there's a real dog right in the middle of the thing. I don't know why. But anyway, the funny part is, the funny part is that we just went to go see a scary movie, like it or not. And it was really good, so Brooke just got scared shitless. And... Uh, does it? Well, there is a dog. Look at that. What happened to the movie theater? I don't even know what's going on anymore. Uh, anyway, so Brooke is not a fan of scary movies. What happened? That good? She's just upset. Don't mind her. She's upset. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> wow. Whoa. That seemed like it was a thing. It was, it was a fell thing. asleep or there was some sort of incident there. I couldn't even understand what Something she was saying. Something about Skittles, but I don't know if oh, that's... Oh, I didn't hear Skittles. That's Maybe funny. I heard it wrong, too. Um, wow, that's awesome. Well, I wasn't even... I didn't even know about that one. This is, I believe, what we were talking about, the continuation from... Oh. Uh, he said the demon was uh, back yesterday and there was a whole big thing. Uh, oh, this no, is the suspense. <laughs> Sorry, that's what he was. He said something <laughs> happened to the demon. <laughs> And, and, and now he, probably this is what happened to the demon. <laughs> what, what happened to me? The whole thing fell apart there. I apologize. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> Deconstruct it later. Um, here we go. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, we're here in the shop first thing in the morning. And here she is in all her splendor. And she had no wheels. Her wheels were stolen uh, at the park and ride just on the border of New York. We went to the city the other night. But now we got new wheels. Insurance is a beautiful thing. She's got a couple of dents on the rocker panel down there. We're not a big fan, but you know what? Insurance is a beautiful thing. You pay it, and then they pay you back at some point in time. So she's here. She's looking better. And uh, happy to have her back. Love you guys. <laughs> We're going to work well, on your storytelling. I'm very happy for him to have the car back. I was also very happy to have a PSA for auto insurance. <laughs> I mean... We're going to work on your storytelling skills, sir. Uh, also, what wasn't well, included the there was, what, you know, the, the, how the car looked and everything. I luckily went to his uh, social media, and I have a picture oh, of the car. Oh, good. Uh, so I guess he came back from New York City. It was at a park and ride. Uh, for those uh, in the country who don't know what a park and ride is, uh, it doesn't matter. 
where you like a bunch of people meet to carpool instead of pe- picking out each other. You drive on the way. to a lot and you get on a bus or something. Right? Yeah, or even to carpool yourselves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he came back from New York City, and that's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, that's the story part. Can't, can't drive home like that. No. It's going to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> so you need a new tire. I'm glad you got them. Oh, that's, that's so funny. Nuts. Well, I'm glad that uh, the demon is back on the road. For th- those who don't know, too, that's a uh, and the picture wasn't that great. It's a Honda. Um, it's a Honda R. SI or whatever. It's the, you know what I mean? A dude it up fucking rice. Love blah, 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 that blah. car. <laughs> really fast, six speed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, and he just loves that stuff. It's funny because he works for BMW and he gets BMW deals on everything. He genuinely likes those cars. Mm-hmm. I mean, he does the BMW, he gets those employee leases and everything and he does them for family members and stuff like that, which you're allowed to do, but he does it for family and stuff like that. So his family and other friends and stuff drive the BMWs, and he just likes his Honda. I visited him without you one time, and, like, that's really all he talked about. Like, he, he couldn't wait to, like, bring me around in that car, like, because he knew He's that we drive. He's had BMW. I mean, he used to have a Z4, I think, we talked about the other day and stuff. Yeah, and he knows similar amounts that you do, but and was so excited to drive me around, and it <laughs> was not the same, but... Oh, that's so funny. It is nice. I love it. I love it. I love a little breathing room, too. Uh, Mrs. Ryan, it's time to ask the question that is on everyone's mind. Well. NPR would like to know. (laughs) (laughs) What is going on? Dun-dun-dun-dun. 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 With Mrs. Ryan. In random physics (laughs) news. In random physics news, <laughs> scientists were able to make bubbles out of sand. What? For How the first time, but like, I don't know. Okay. Um, but what oh, they... I, didn't think, I don't think I filled it up. I would love to turn the bubbles on right now. You should have told me that was coming. No, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell us about the sand bubbles. What's cool, I remember having stuff when I was a kid, that, like out of sand that you had a magnet and moved stuff around. So it felt similar to me. I'm probably yeah. You mean toys? That. You're confusing a couple things. That w- whenever you were moving the things around, it was usually metal shavings, like the little right. guy with the face that you right. would put his beard on and stuff. It was okay. For that thing, um, uh, but then etch a sketch is a different thing, also. But I think that yeah. also may be. I'm not sure. That, I think that you're right. I think everything I knew was magnets. So this is new for like granular particles, like a state of matter, which is what they're exploring. Right. It's a solid into what inherently you need a liquid to make the bubbles generally. Right. Which is what they're like. Th- they were studying how the densities work and so they put high uh high density and heavy and light and like different densities together Mm -hmm. and what they found that they compared to lava lamps which are made out of liquid usually different densities liquid of liquid but also our guest yesterday monique thomas on her way out asked how do lava lamps work that was the last thing she said on the way out (laughs) yeah it, (laughs) it popped into my head too um so this, uh, they showed, uh, scientists showed that this state of matter can act like a liquid, <clears throat> which is cool because it has geological applications, but also pharmacological as- uh, applications. That's cool. So um, it's neat to watch. It was good visual for me. I, it helped me. I think it'll help with med- like what I eat and like how I apply that stuff to my body. Okay. So it's interesting. Um and it's about physics, and I apparently was a huge nerd this morning. Um, <laughs> and I awesome. love it. Uh, itching can influence your immune response to certain foods. Did you say itching? Yeah. Oh, itching. Okay. Like that, you know, yeah. when you itch. And so, um, there was a lot. The, a lot of the articles were confusing because the the real crux of it, and the real thing, the real takeaway, is that. If you're mindful and you don't scratch, the whole point is not to scratch. It's like chicken pox. Yeah, they you're say basically don't cementing a physical reaction and uh, like a habit. You're forming a habit, but also biologically, when you do this, it creates a reaction in your body that creates a different kind of cell. That when I was a kid growing up with the uh, the, the allergies, it was my eye yeah. wiping my eye the exact same. Uh, I would assume it's the exact same thing. Yeah, any kind of superficial laceration or whatever. It creates a different, it, the immune response it created by it creates a cell that interacts with in your gut mm-hmm. that is like problematic and doesn't need to be triggered. Hmm. 
so stop scratching <laughs> and it will reduce it, it helps reduce food allergies but like i think that's the mindfulness part which we talk about all the time but yeah. like they all go together and so this was a good study to remind me of that well done um soon there will be a 23 and me for forests they're starting out in california with the redwoods and the sequoias I still don't know what the 23... I think you might have told me once before, but I wiped it immediately. Genetic testing and, like, a database. Oh, okay. Um, Is that the thing where everyone's the DNA testing? Yeah, oh, you geez. spit okay. on a thing yeah, and then right. now the Got whole it. world's connected. Yep. Um, so they're doing that with trees, too, because what I didn't know, and this is why I included this, really, is that redwoods which are those tall ones that we mm -hmm. have out here which is they're they're studying redwoods and sequoias which is how they're starting leaf studies next year um but redwoods are really hexaploids because they get three sets of chromosomes from each parent so they end up having six sets so it's gonna be a big database so that's wild heads up on that for the forest people um and then at the end of april does that mean that they're more complex creatures than we are I think so. Yeah, I think we're going to find out a lot. It's about time. How it's all connected. And it's like, <laughs> it, trees are things. If we're going to turn out everybody should have been hugging trees all along. All along. <laughs> yeah. That's your neighbor Absolutely. from three million years ago. Yeah, like, that's your mom. <laughs> totally. You never know. You never know. You'll find out. Um, okay. At the end of April in Scotland, there's going to be Keanu Khan. Keanu Khan? Yeah. As in Reeves? Yeah. Or Reeve? Yeah. Is it plural? Reeves. I don't remember. Uh, no, I, I, don't, I, I do too. Um, this guy, okay, the, it's being put in that there's 11 movies in this Keanu Khan film festival, whatever. It's being put on by a company that does a Nick Cage film festival, and not everyone loves him. Those, for those reasons. guys have both done some really good and some really bad movies. Right. I so, mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, this is a, it's a personality. Yeah. Keanu's known as like a humanitarian and a giver and a thing. And he used to play the bass, which I kind of forgot. He used to have a band, De Dead Dog or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghost Dog. Something. I can't remember what it was. That's not, neither one of those are right. Something talk. Uh, <laughs> go, dog Star. Yeah, dog star. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever. We, yeah, we see him up at, we see him places sometimes, and um, he's a he is a great. Per I put him up there with a the Jim Carrey. They're just they're functioning at a different level, and whatever yeah. you, uh, whatever you think, uh, I assure you, those are characters. The actual guy, while he may seem and look, uh, he is a brilliant thinker, and yeah. he knows so much more than we do. Yeah, he's half animal, he's half tree. You know, I, I mean, think he so gets too. he gets stuff. Really I nice think so too. too. So I love that they're celebrating his humanitarianism in Scotland with a film festival. That unfortunately does not include Point Break, but it does have The Matrix and um, the They're Bill probably and Ted saving movies. that for the Patrick Swayze one when that oh. comes out in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, heads I'm right up. up there with Roadhouse. Scotland, if you're there, I want to go. But um, that's what's going on. Oh, it's my goodness. Been that's such been, a good morning. That's been what's going on, Mrs. Ryan. Dun 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 Good job. Thanks. That's fun. I like when I get lost in your news. Do you know what I mean? When it's just a, it becomes a real conversation. I, it's so much more enjoyable. Same. <laughs> then when you think I'm picking it apart or whatever, and like I'm not intending to do that, it's great. Uh, we're figuring it out, folks. What are you going to do? All right, Mrs. Ryan, it's time to take a break. We'll get our guest in here. Okay. Bob Zaney's here. We're going to find out all about him uh, in a few more minutes right after this break. More to come. He'll be in that chair right after this. So, so, so.
I'll I'll take it. I just don't want to learn stuff like that. Uh, I I needed a new phone three years ago, but I got it down now. Well, in that case, we are back with Bob Zaney. Bob Zaney is here. Hello, Bob. (laughs) Bring that up to you wherever you're comfortable. Jay, I'm sorry. You just told me I didn't have to worry about the mic. I (laughs) said... Now the mic's fine. Is this good? Nicole, everything okay over there? You know what I like most about this show? What's that? Would, earlier, I don't know if it was before the battery mix-up, but <laughs> you said Bob Zaney is in the house, and literally I'm in your in house. house. Yeah. Literally I in like the house. that. This is not a lie. No. So this, this program does not lie. That's true. Thank you. And we're also not uh, trying to rip on the Arsenio Hall thing. We really do have a house here that people are in. I mean, we've, we've well, we could rip on Arsenio. That's fine. I did it. <laughs> You know, I did his very first Late Show when he took over the Late Show when Joan, Joan Rivers, Rivers was fired. You mean the first episode? The v- first episode. I remember all of this. This yeah. is my life. So please. I was the comic on there with the, remember Christopher the Puppet Guy? No, I just No, you're I talking about the, the real takeover. show. I'm talking no, about. No, I mean his, when he took over Joan Rivers' right. Late Show after the whole kerfuffle. They were, it was really funny because the, I, I was in my green room and they gave me this, this towel, this beautiful robe and I said, can I keep this? I don't care. Take it. They didn't know think they were going to be around. So wow. they. Wow. We started clearing out the dressing room. Specifically, I remember the Howard Stern episode when they switched chairs and the whole bit, and the whole thing just went nuts. But it was a weird – he was good enough at that job that they gave him one, right? Yeah, and he, he told a great story about that because uh, I actually did another episode with him too. I did four all together on that. And he said that they didn't think it was going to take off, so he only signed like a 13-week contract. Oh, wow. So what happened was it became so popular, he said they would call him up and – They'd say $5 million, and he said, I had to hang up the phone. <laughs> and they got to like 20, and he still had to hang up because he ended up making 30. Holy wow. smokes. Can you imagine be that part, you know? No. And again, before that, you know, sure, he did the— That show was syndicated, right? It was so. syndicated, yeah. yeah. That was Paramount Different money. world back then. Different world. I don't think people really even realize what it used to be like. Nope. I did a pilot. <laughs> excuse me. I did a pilot with uh, Casey Kasem called Rocket to the Stars, and it was an offshoot of Star Search. And okay. it, Dick Clark Productions, uh, Telepictures, all these people, right? And everybody thought this thing was going to take off. And a week before, they're going to fly me to NAPTI. We're going to sell this show, get a call, can't sell the show. And I worked with Before it, the convention? Before the convention, so I ended up not going. And then uh, We don't want to sell the show. I did the, uh, the Jerry Lewis telethon for about 17 years, and I co-hosted with Casey a few times, and we'd always talk about that. He said, man, I thought that was going to take off, too. I thought that was the one. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Did you and find I'm, out why? Huh? That's so random. Did you find out why? Oh, no. It's just the business. You know, they just okay. find it's, it. It's still in turnaround. I've, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've, uh, this is not an exaggeration. I think I've done 28 TV pilots. And one of them that actually got on the air was Candid Camera with Dom DeLuise as the host. So I do this non-airable pilot, and you guys know what that means. That means you can't show it on TV. Yeah. They just paid me a grand. I did it, whatever. So I had to go in an audition when the show was actually picked up. What and were you doing, though? Because Candy Camera was typically, I mean, right. the hidden was, camera show. The yeah, first hidden camera I was an show. actor, basically. Okay. and I was at, Oh, in a scene, in, in a, a scene, setup. For, right. I got you. Okay. It was a, people would put stuff in the microwave, and I would be standing in front of it, and they switched it out without them knowing it. And they would just see their reactions, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that's, that's that's funny. This isn't, I, this isn't my, is. They didn't put macaroni and cheese in here. It's, it's yeah, they would come out. There would be just an egg. <laughs> oh, really <laughs> weird. That's yeah, they, so what happened was I go in audition and and I don't get the show. They said you're not right for the show. I said let me get this straight. I, I did the pilot that got you to the job because right. I didn't see you around, and I'm not right for. I said okay, fine. So a few months goes by. I get a friend. I get a call from a friend. He's on the road in Dallas. He says, I just saw your candid camera episode. I said what? It's a non-airable pilot. They're not allowed to show that. So they took my scene, put it in the real show, and then I had to call AFTRA, and they got me paid. And then Absolutely. I got a few checks, and then the last check I got from them was for the best of Candid Camera. And every friend of mine— But you weren't good enough for the I show. I wasn't good enough for the show. <laughs> but even gets better because what happened was all my friends who were comedians were going into audition, and they said they would show your scene to show how it's done. So Not, I must have pissed someone off. I don't know. Well, you could have been better but, than better than Dom DeLuise or whoever. Well, and Dom was— Yeah, that was a good point. The and only I love great, Dom DeLuise. I know. The best thing about Dom DeLuise was how he introduced me, and actor Bob Zaney. Like, I'm just a comic. <laughs> you know, I've acted. I've done some films. I played Matt Damon's attorney, but I'm still a comic. You know, I, I can get by. <laughs> oh, I, the informant, right? The informant. That was a great, great experience. You know, Matt Damon, let's, great let's guy. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah Matt Damon, great guy. It's a guy. great movie. It's a great movie. A lot of great comedians are in that. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, one of my scenes is with uh, 
Tommy Smothers and uh, oh gosh, now Clancy Brown, who's the actor, mm-hmm. boy, great guy. He played the people probably know him from Lost, I think. Maybe, Lost right? and also Shawshank Redemption. Oh, Shawshank, one of, the guard, of course, yeah. one of the guards with the taxes. We, you know, it's like kind of this show. You sit around a lot, wait, and uh, <laughs> to go on, so you get to talk to these ten people. Minutes. We gave him yeah. ten minutes. <laughs> but my scenes were with Matt when we were in his office, and Steven Soderbergh's the director, so they're out there in the back, you know, filming us. But we're, we're alone in the office, and Matt says to me. You know, I like it when a director directs me. And I go, Matt, I don't know you. I, are you being sarcastic right now? He said, no. I, it's their picture. Just tell me what you need. I'll tell do it so I do, go yeah. home. <laughs> and I get that, you know. Yeah. And we're doing this scene where he's closing the mini Venetian blinds so no one can see. Because I'm, we're having this heart-to-heart if he's in trouble with the company. Right. Because he's an he's, FBI if anybody, and, Yeah, if anybody knows it, it's, right. a, it's like he's his own double agent kind of thing, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, so I'm playing his attorney. He's bipolar or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So there's these. So he closes them all, and then there's a door, and then there's that that mini blinds about probably three inches wide. I said, Matt, wouldn't that be funny if you close that one too? Because it didn't matter. You really couldn't see in. And but he it shows opens, his, huh? It shows the character. It shows the character, right? So he opens the door and yells to Steven and says, "Hey, Bob had a great idea." Of course, I'm sitting there going, "Is he throwing me under the bus?" Yeah, that's right what now? I would think too. Now, you know, you never just do know. it. Don't involve the director, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it showed what a great guy he was. He wasn't like, you know, this prima donna. He's just like, that's how I am. Let's just get this done, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm doing this. We're all on uh, the same team. We're, here. It's the same team. I'm doing a sitcom right now in uh, Carson City, Nevada called Casino Boss. And, uh, you know, there's like five ensemble actors. And three of them are comedians that really – I've, I've been down this road, you know, and I want to get the scenes done. And I can be funny. And I, I'm the one who always gets in trouble. So I'm this last take, it's like, come on. Just I, the guy had a bracelet on, the comic, and he, he's on the table. And I knew it was going to make noise where we're going to have to do it oh. over and over. And I pointed out the director's standing there, the producer's right. Yeah. She probably take. And they said, "Hey, good call, Bob." And it's just like you know, the dick joke comic pointed it out. You know what I mean? But it's it's about Who's more observant than the dick joke comic. Well, the, uh, I'm, I'm being serious. It and is, you, and you have an understand comedians in general have an under- fundamental understanding of how things work because you have to deconstruct everything for a living. Well, I think what happens is as you get older too, as you do this, you you mature a little bit. It's like my dog; he's a mature puppy now, Frankie. <laughs> okay, Frankie, do you have pets here? I saw some food bowls, and I said, "Is there's that for a, you, Jay?" A, I am Jay. I am Jay. <laughs> no, is that for you, Jay? Oh, that's it's food balls yeah, on the that's floor. Right. Uh, that's nice. You've really organized them well. We have a, an 18-year-old kitty uh, in the other room. Ah, oh, we just took our kitty cat in. She's uh, about 16, so, mm. and they want to run those tough tests. Tough at that age. Yeah, yeah that's why is. she's not going. And then, she's living and then, happily ever after. Yeah, they just uh, no, nah, we don't need that test. <laughs> yeah. How much? Where do you need to go this it, uh, right weekend? Right now, it's about uh, ha- comfort. Yeah. 18 is a long time. Yeah. I always yeah. say this. I, we're dog people, too. All rescues, by the way. Folks listening, rescues. You rescue those animals. But um, don't get two different. Fully agreed. Yeah, don't get two different pets at the same time. Made a horrible mistake. Got a greyhound dog and a rabbit. Oh, new pets at the same time. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I have not seen Walked either right one. Into it. Seen. Walked right I, I will it. sneak some jokes in, Jay. I, I apologize. Almost, almost stepped I, on it to and explain actually, it. Can I say something? That's actually authentic for me. <laughs> I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I read the bio. I read the, the, the list. No, but I'm just saying about pets, if I have a question for God, and this is my question for God, why do parrots live 100 years and mm. dogs, if you're lucky, 13 to 15? And I know what God's going to say, because I like dogs. I want them up here. I don't want those parrots. <laughs> You can keep them. You can keep the parrots. It's but 80, it is 80, 90 years, 100 I, years. Yeah, well, it's not unlikely. Frankie's but. going to be 14, so he's, what, 98 or something? And, and Times he, seven or whatever. He rests, he rests a lot, but when he gets his burst of energy, we have a big backyard, he does laps still. And I'm just going, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at that age. I don't, it, it really makes you just really look at life when you lose pets. So. Well, yeah. geez, I don't want to talk about that. I'm, well, not, I'm not ready. Not. I'm not ready. I mean, I am because I'm fundamentally, I, I will be ready. How old are you, about 38? 42, four, almost 42, 41. Do you have a note over here you're looking at? No, I go to her because this <laughs> came up just yesterday, and I said 42. And It I goes by I, fast, doesn't it? I couldn't remember if 42 or 41 was right. I knew we had just done this the other day. But it, it's it's you just look at things differently. You have a different perspective as yeah. you get a little older, and you, you know, it was I, I did a joke years ago on the Zany Report about uh, Al Lewis, who played uh, Grandpa Munster, mm-hmm. great actor, been around a long time, and he was like probably eight. he's been gone a long time. Too. Yeah, he's been gone a long time. <laughs> but it gives you an idea when the joke was. But he was like ninety. 
he he was like 92 or three, and he was telling people Your material's he, dead, literally. Yeah. He was 92 or 93, and he's telling people that he was in the autumn of his year. So he said, no, oh boy. it's about New Year's Eve for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that analogy of when they try to pinpoint it. As in, pl- I'm still hireable is yeah. what that translates to. Well, you are, actually. You know, it, as a, when Louis Anderson won the Emmy, I went, you know what? Just keep doing it. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. So. It's true. I love Louis. Do you like Louis? I like He's an old friend. He, he actually, his first TV show in L.A. was because of me. There was a show called Two on the Town, and I had a company called rent a roast I did with two other comedians, and we hired Louis. And they came out and filmed it, and Louis was prominently, you know, shown on that uh, showcase. No kidding. No way. Yeah, I did fun. his podcast. He had a podcast in uh, Vegas at the Plaza for a while. I did yeah. that. So. Oh, that's fun. He's an old friend. All right. Well, how did you get into comedy? Well, because I, I, I understand that that's not the only thing you do and have done, but I would like to know. No, but comedy, you know, it's funny. Frank Sinatra was always asked, what do you do, Frank? I'm a saloon singer. He hmm. knew what he was. That's what he did. Didn't matter how much I'm you paid a, him. I'm a, I'm a nightclub comic. I get that. That's fine. Can hmm. I do other things? Yes. Have I done other things? Yes. I've done, I, it's overwhelming sometimes when I, I'm trying to write the – I had a documentary come out called Close But No Cigar. And it was it pretty much documents my career, but up to like night like 50. <laughs> almost nailed it. Like that no, kind of because thing. It, you can't cover everything, right? You know these stories like I was telling you earlier. You can't. There's not that much time in it, and that was a director's cut. So it's like I wasn't really involved. I happened to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> have you ever been filmed for a documentary? Yeah, you know what it's like, and it's like they. No, none you. of mine have come out actually. Oh, <laughs> so I don't. Well, well I know what the filming. You know the like. process, <laughs> yeah, Jay, and you know that process is yeah. pretty tedious. Tedious is the. And exactly it's like the word. this is me half the time going. I, I, I don't need you right now. But it was funny when we screened it at the St. Louis Film Festival. I'm sitting way in the back. The place is packed. And people were laughing when I was just talking. Just, you you do, don't you. ever you give that. Bring that to you, you don't. Uh, hi. I'm Bob. Uh, you new here? You play basketball? Anyway. Uh, what? So We're going to get to your broadcasting history as well. But, well, now, no, but for now. Your little, I like the phone. Anyway, <laughs> is Mannix going to call any minute now? <laughs> Don Draper, actually. <laughs> uh, Don Draper, well, now, see, you're doing a remake. That Mannix was real thing. They had those phones. I um, understand. That what was from, I talking that about? That was from Mad Men. Oh, it was from Mad Men? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. where I got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you can sell it here as an eBay thing. What were we just talking about? We'll get to that, but it's funny you bring up phones. We have the phone from all, the actual bunker phone from All in the Family too. Oh, I'm, really? I'm weird when it comes to collecting no, that's things. cool. And that show they just said they're bringing back. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you authenticate that? <laughs> that one actually has a, a an old fashioned letter from the prop from the prop guy from the, oh, from the okay. set decorator. From oh, the that's show. good. Yeah, but and you get a photo. You like get it. a photo on the set too, that's right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, yeah, this pencil is actually from your show, and I'm going to have it authenticated later. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you I hear they're free. <laughs> well, I got people, they, and they know how to get the lead out. Look, let me tell you this. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> See, there used to be lead in pencils. Yeah, folks. there used to be. I wonder it's if we're trying to now, make right? it's gra- well, since it's I was a kid. It's been graphite. You know, I don't really. I rarely use pencils. I'm a pen guy, as you probably can see by the marks on my hands. But it's like I do it once, and I have to cross it out. I cross I'm an it imperfectionist. Out. I like the. Do you like the racing part? Is it cathartic? No, the truth is, you see all the other stuffs in pen. But when it comes to notes and the, the whole talk show, the, the, we're sort of period correct. Yeah. It's, I don't know if you know this is actually Letterman's old desk, but oh, is nods it? To, to, to from Steve Allen. CBS yeah. or uh, yeah, the chairs too. Not NBC. Correct. This is CBS. This is Bill Murray, the first night, wrote Dave. Well, on why don't you just sell all this and quit? I mean, is that I, it? you know, that, we're over it. <laughs> yeah, you're okay, get over <laughs> it. Showbiz will just disappoint. That's the end. You know, I have the, I have so many of these young comics come up to me and ask my advice, and they just don't want to hear it. I say it's stage time, and then you get a little more stage time, and you keep getting stage time. Experience. And maybe you might know why you're up there. Yeah. You and know, you know, and. Uh, I didn't take a class in comedy. I was on the gong. Oh, that's what we were talking about, how I got my start. There we go. I was on the gong the show. George Barris gong show. Chuck Barris Chuck gong Barris, show. Chuck Barris, that's right. 1977. I was 15, just turned 16, doing stand-up comedy for the first time. In fact, that's the opening piece in my documentary. It's uh, What I look at is surreal now. Uh, it's kind of like looking at kinescope. You're going... Was that me? Did I really? But I remember it. So I, w- I did stand up very badly. And I w- first time I ever performed in my life. And I went on national TV. And to be rewarded, I was pulled off stage by a man dressed like a nun with a big net. 
Oh, so they didn't gong you? No. <laughs> if you got gong, you didn't get paid anything. I was considered a specialty act, wow. so I got a check from after for $125.98. And <laughs> and I painted houses with my dad, and I went, you know what, it's a showbiz thing. I don't think if I had gotten paid, I would have continued. But uh, And I've gotten residual checks, too, over the years. They Did show- you ever used to watch the old gong show? Do you even have any idea what we're talking I about right now? I have a very limited, vague memory. There used to be a panel, usually comedians or whatever, and they would have acts that were... Often intentionally bad. No, they all were. Oh, they, they were. They, always they only have bad? one or two good acts. That was the whole premise well, I said of the most. show. I said most. Yeah, Chris. Chris. Well, you're absolutely right, Jay, and I know how important. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and check that note? Is that note right there? Okay, accuracy check, authenticity check. So, uh, but anyway, I was pulled off stage. I got 128, 25 dollars ninety eight cents, and a waffle iron. Oh. Parents were not happy because that that's a promotional consideration. It, it was. Like. That's what it's called. And my parents weren't happy because we were a pancake family. <laughs> but you know, I've gotten residual. That's so stupid. I love that. That's my favorite thing you've said so far. It's so like. <laughs> it's so true. We didn't eat waffles. That's for the elite. Anyway. Oh my god. This was before Legos. Look, oh the point. God. Lego, my ego. Uh, so egos, that's right. So anyway, uh, I've gotten residual checks over the years and they were like for 58 cents and this is before I'm incorporated. So they took out taxes <laughs> four cents to FICA. FICA got four cents. So I'm covered. I'm okay. I was going to say it'll pay itself back. Well, I got my after pension. I'm guaranteed 250 a year, uh, two for 250 a month when I retire. So that's what it's boy, up that'd to. be a good You're lunch. Set. That's what yeah. it's up to. Uh, it's great. sad. It's just sad. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but that was my first uh, thing, and then I started doing talent contests in West Covina, where I grew up. And but you liked it enough? Was it the audience? What was it? What did you like about it? I I don't know. I know I was very nervous for many years. You know how people talk about hey, you get nervous before you go on or do something. Now it's like yeah, hey, show me where you want me to stand. This is where you live now. Yeah, it's like I said. I play Angry Birds before a show. Yeah, you know, that's Car- true. That's you know what? Did before. Carson, uh, you know, they would get together. Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson, Fred DeCorvita. Before the Tonight Show, they f- for like fifteen minutes mm-hmm. talk about everything but the show. Exactly. Yeah. You don't need that in your head. Exactly. Agreed. I remember. And they when, wouldn't go talk to the guests ahead of time. No, there's no. You don't keep it fresh that way. And exactly. then they would get mad because Carson was quiet at commercial break. He was saving it for the air. Absolutely. Some of my best stuff in de- you know doing radio is off air. You know. Yep. yep. And it's gone. Wasted. It's gone. It's that moment is gone. Luckily, you have like eight cameras, so I know my testicles are covered. <laughs> And uh, that was your idea, wasn't it, Nicole? Here That's here the publicist. The Hello. I don't know. Do we keep this clean? I didn't. I didn't even ask. That's whatever that. you it, want. It's real, baby. That's authentic. <laughs> it is. It's on the internet. Who cares? It's on the internet. And then ten years later, here's a great story. They ten brought years back after the Gong Show. After the Gong Show, uh, 1988, 87, 88. They brought back the Gong Show, with the real Don Blue, and I was a celebrity judge. With the nice. real Don Blue? No, he was. I think that he was a, a DJ up in San Francisco. Oh. I think that was his name. I forget. <laughs> But he was the host? He was the version? host, and they brought it back, and I did it with Bob Eubanks. And I've run into Bob a few times. You know who he is? The host newly of the dating game. game. Newlywed Hit, game, wasn't newlywed it? Newlywed game. You're yeah. right. I'm sorry. And the best thing about him, he mortgaged his house to bring in a little band in 1964 to play the Hollywood Bowl, and everybody said he was nuts. That band was called the Beatles. He did. That was turn him. Out. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that he ended was up being him? their promoter for all their tours. Oh, I never wow. knew that. Yeah, I was watching this game show documentary, and it's funny. I was... Uh, it was hosted by Alex Trebek, who I did. And he he did to tell the truth. They brought it back with him as the host, who was the real Bob Zaney. I did it with him. He tried to do my jokes. It was so sad. <laughs> Alex is a great guy. He's just not a joke teller. And he's, I had a cholesterol test, and they found bacon. That's how he said that joke of mine. <laughs> So anyway, it was just I don't funny. Know if he got it. No, oh he didn't God. get it. But every almost, I would say, seventy-five percent of those people in the documentary I know or worked with. Wow. You know, it's funny you forget in this business. Now I can put you guys off the bucket list, but in this <laughs> business, <laughs> I, I was doing Dick the right to our faces. It's yeah, amazing. I, I hey, it. why not? I'll take it. You don't know. You're here. I'll you take don't it. know. <laughs> so anyway, I was doing the warm up for the Emmys about 10, 15 years ago. And I hadn't been around. I've been gone on the road so much. And I'm walking around backstage, and all these TV people, I know them. You know, they're going, hey, Bob, how you doing? I forgot, because I really kind of took a break from the oh, TV. right, right, right. We and was doing the road and just learning my craft and getting it down right, you know, doing that Chris Rock thing where he bombed and he realized he had to go on the road and learn his act. When did that happen? 
It was, I think, after Saturday Night Live, you know, you get oh. fame can get you so far on stage, you know, and then you have to deliver the goods. You know, it's funny. People will say that if you know somebody, it doesn't matter. Even if you're you, the child of a celebrity, if you don't have talent, it doesn't matter. Sure, it opens the door. Right. But it, well, far how far as, is it? Ta- it's you. up to you. It's like I always when I book comedians, I did it for years. There was a point where I was booking 30 comics a week. And I told him, look, I can open the door for you. It's really up to you to keep that, you know, to get in. Mm-hmm. If you don't do the job, I can't go to bat for you because maybe you need to think, rethink this. Right. So that's how it works. Hmm. What was, what, at what point in Chris Rock's career were you working with him, time-wise? Uh, well after Saturday Night Live. Oh, that was well years. after. Yeah, oh, 02 to like oh, 08. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. right? He did, yeah. but he went out and did the work. He talks about it a lot. It was a super important time for him, and a lot because a lot of comedians say that about fame. Like you get up there and you think your act is better than it is because no. people mm. clap, right? Because you're famous, mm. and they'll do they'll give you a lot of leeway for that. But like at a certain point, if your material sucks, it sucks, well, and they're even harder than. Well, there's a lot of there's some people who are like actors who are famous who go into a comedy club and they'll sell tickets the first time. Yeah, that's they're it. not some again, mm-hmm. right? You know, it's kind of like you're paying to see a celebrity, but, you know, with me, you get the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm, a, of, I'm a semi-celebrity. Oh, speaking of the whole that. package, uh, broadcasting. Yeah. I literally went to broadcasting school. I never did anything Who did you go? Now. Where did you go? Connecticut School of Broadcasting. <laughs> oh, that's solely cool. because Very I East lived Coast, in Connecticut. Yeah, that's where well, I lived. Well, I grew up here. I grew up in West Covina, so. So wh- where did you go? Mount Sac. Oh, Mount really San did. Antonio College. And I was telling Nicole off-air during the pre-interview. <laughs> Where she sits there and drinks tea and acts like, why are you in my home? Yeah. That pre-interview. Part. You remember that part? Yeah. You were off to the side. Hiding There's you no in a corner going, uh, <laughs> this is Letterman's desk. Anyway, the point is, I'm kidding. He it's hates probably true. Nicole, he hates me, but I won you over and that's all that matters. It's the wife that keeps everything going. Uh, that was what I, I have was gotten told. so many TV shows because the wife like me. <laughs> keep the wives happy. Man. Yeah. Keep that the, was wife. the You know what they I say? Got. Happy wife, uh, miserable, Don Trotton man. <laughs> just wants to give up anyway <laughs> it's a different way to look at it yeah Jay. thank you uh what was i just saying we used to be there she almost died i almost died and our life's different now yeah. so it's one of those like even though i i've been a fan of comedy my whole life and she's worked in it her whole life we still are but yet we see the world differently and i have to assume it's you, kind of what you were talking about earlier when you said oh what how old are you when you get to a certain age you understand people better blah blah, well, blah. of course and you, you do see the world differently and you have things happen to you that change you perspective uh, yeah. my wife i saved her life uh, about a year and a half ago and had a situation where you know the paramedics showed up everything worked oh, out my goodness. but uh anyway uh but we there was like a 10-year period where we lost like 40 people in our life and our pets That's a lot i mean and it was moms and dads oh. and just down and after a while it was oh it's their turn yeah right you go just oh it must be the their turn yeah point. it's their turn wow. and it's still going on now i mean i've met so many worked with so many people over the years that i'll just every day it's i don't that's what i hate about facebook who who's died today right you know what memorial you're going to broadcasting let's get back to that jay yeah, that's so let's talk happy mm. but so mount san antonio i it was a junior college and i i was gonna get a two-year what is that an as degree or whatever it's called no. and radio and tv broadcasting and no sats I, for that right huh you, you no sats for that type of school oh right? no no I, it's right. the I didn't take it seriously <laughs> i didn't either did you even take the sats i don't know if i did or I not i did not take a i, I don't, never prepped for it i never had any intention of taking do it. do not remember don't you remember going in the cafeteria and taking tests though with the bubbles yeah of course i, I don't know those, what those, those tests were placement tests. yeah i don't know what they were i i to this day i can the california it, achievement test is what ours was called even though Cat? we were in connecticut yeah and i mean the connecticut mastery test i was like you know i got one one B in high school. I mean, one D in high school. It was in algebra my freshman year. I took algebra again the next year because I, I got a B plus because I just that you wasn't your me. choice out of your choice out of my you choice. And then I became the lab assistant for the class. So wow. go figure. But that I had a little pride in that. But it's is like, that the type of person you are where if it can't be done well, not going to. Well, yes and no. I think you give your best and you don't you don't freak out over it. It's like it. everything happens for a reason. It was Socrates who said. Isn't that sad? You both got quiet like I'm going to quote Socrates. Anyway, here's the point. You just live (laughs) and you learn. Okay? Yeah. 
It was the great French novelist Balzac who said, <laughs> "That's not true." My friends call me scrotum. <laughs> No, not no, true. That's not Ball, true. It was Balzac. Right? We're going to have to reread yeah. that. I think. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. reference fact well, check that sucker. Well, you didn't take the SAT, so don't you? Don't <laughs> you know what? That, and then I have no defense because you're right. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, it did come from a fellow non-SAT taker. <laughs> you must have taken him, right? I did, Of yeah. course you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's Good great. Score? She went to Michigan, University oh, of Michigan. Oh, that's right. We were talking about that. The UP baby, yeah. But you did, did you go? It wasn't the UP. It's it's in the it's in, it's in it's the mitten Detroit. right here. I'm going there this weekend, by the way. To, to be at the State Theater in Bay City, Michigan. <laughs> I'll do it, baby. And uh, I'll be in the uh, one night stands in Waterford, <laughs> and then stand is spelled, spelled S T A N. So I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Isn't that a great name for a club? One night one stands. One night stands. Of course, it's Michigan. Can we? All right, Zanies. We'll bounce back to. We'll get back to it. But Zanies, uh, even though it's a pluralization of your last name, they're both unusual. There's no connection, correct? It's not no, like, the comedy club in Chicago. People well, there used have to be a bunch of them. Is there only one now? There, no, they have like four there, and yeah. they won't hire me. Okay. Oh, right. Isn't that a well, that's, but here's this because of you or the billing? Uh huh. Is it because of you? I or? don't know what the reason is, and I've talked to the guy Bert. And it's like weird. seems like a match made in heaven to me. Well, I had an off night, and I said I got to play Zanies. You know, this is like this is where my career is. Like I said, I have all fifty states and nine countries. I do things that I haven't done before, like this program, <laughs> this camera. Again soon. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so anyway, I so I go to Zanies, I do a guest set, and everybody in the room knew who I was, and it was just like I've been there before, and I haven't, and to this day I haven't been back. But I had a woman with well, very I, large. I, I can't figure that one out. I know. I so have, they did book you, but no, they won't no, again. it was a guest set. I just wanted to say I performed there. Oh, I see, I see. And then I am playing the Laugh Factory down the street, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. So I, a woman with large breasts came up to me once, and she said, I've been to your club Zanies in Chicago. I said, well, no, that's not my club, but I've been to yours Hooters. Did she get it? No. Yeah, it doesn't matter, one. Jay. <laughs> really? You just keep going. Oh, gosh. I always stop. I'm you like, see, how did it play? Look at how did it play. Because <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm not in comedy. I'm a fan of comedy. I watch what you do, and I try to dissect it. I, I don't ever want to do it. I just love watching it. Well, I don't, don't they say once you dissect a joke, there's no more joke? Well, you, you know, funny is funny. It's Jerry Lewis used to always that's right. say. I, I want to make sure you're not funny in my <laughs> mind. That's my goal. I'm sure the cutting think? away, the Bob <laughs> had to pee. You know, there's going to be a lot of stuff added. I get it. <laughs> Jerry Lewis said, you know funny. Okay? And that's how he was. Do and you, you do other impressions? Teach, that's pretty good. What, Bob, what you do out there. I have a uh, in the documentary. There's a tape of the telethon where I tell a joke and they cut to Jerry. He's laughing so hard he almost falls on the ground. <laughs> he leaves his podium. Oh my gosh! And I had a friend of mine, Fred Wolf. I don't know who you know. If he's a writer, comedian, and works with Spade and and okay. Sandler and all that, and done a bunch of movies. And Fred I've saw the him. document. You know Fred. Mm -hmm. We started out together, stand ups, and no way. very funny guy, very funny guy. And he he watched my documentary and he said, "I am so jealous of you." Whoa! If I had a tape. Of Jerry Lewis laughing that hard, oh, wow. I would quit the business. You know, there's, it's funny how different milestones are important to people. But I, they always say, "What's your best night? What's the best thing ever happened show business?" I said, "I'm still waiting, or I wouldn't be doing it. I'm still learning." Like you said, we're learning. You're constantly learning, and once you yeah. think you got it down, yes, I have that's it when down. You get bit though. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. You there, but there's a cutoff point too. I remember Bob Hope was on a Tonight Show with Johnny Carson towards the end of Johnny's tenure yeah. and bob is he's interviewing him and go huh what huh and i bet johnny was going yeah i don't want to be that that's not how i want to end it you know there's yeah. a point where you go it's oh. not right dana gould has a bit about that too he worked on something with bob at the end and yeah. it's exactly what you just said the yeah. same story of ah, ah, ah. Yeah. nothing nothing left dana gould very funny man Agreed. Agreed. Used to work for me. I had clubs. I started out one of the smartest. But not Zanies. Not Zanies. Bob <laughs> Zanies Comedy Outlets. And no I also kidding. booked Rodney Dangerfield's club in Las Vegas. So explain and explain why there was confusion York, growing in up. L.A. Yeah. Yeah, there could be. And there was a comedy outlet factory in Philadelphia. So. Oh, comedy factory. Yeah. Oh, well, that's everything, isn't it? It's, it is. You know what? It's Philadelphia. All I know is I trademarked Bob Zaney. And I was on the gong show in 77 and Zaney started in 78. Okay? What do you need from me?
There's your proof. You get anything from that? <laughs> Nothing. That would have been nice. Nothing. I can't okay. even it would explain why they didn't there. want you there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't even play the room. No. Uh, all right, broadcasting. How, but wh- how and why did you decide to do that? The, the D in high school and whatever else tells, it just says to me, oh, I'm a perfectionist. I want to do well No, in I life. wanted to go and on a show. Go- well, I wanted to go into show business, okay. and I thought this was – and my friends were going to the, the community college. I said, I'll go to college. My parents, all they wanted – I have two brothers and a sister. All they ever wanted from us was a high school diploma. Mm. They came from the generation. You know, they were born into the Depression, yeah. and, you know, they had to work, so they left school early. So that's all they really wanted. So yeah, it was bonus time sure. doing that. But so I had did a film in high school called Telemania. And I was inspired by Kentucky Fried movie. Mm-hmm. Remember that in Tunnel Vision? That was very funny movies. So that was my version of it. And I remember there was a comedy class at USC, and I I, I sent the I said I you know I, I wasn't ready to be a stand up, but I had this film, and I, so I paid the costs. And they said, well, we'll show the film, but we're really teaching something else here. And I went, I don't want to do <laughs> that. Just exhibition. So my mom called and got the check back. Okay, <laughs> that's a good mommy, huh? Wow. Yeah. But I and I still have a I still have a note from my mom when I was like seventeen. <clears throat> there was a place called Dial a Band. It was an agency, and they got me a Dial gig. a Band. Dialed a Band. They had a casino chip with the name on it in Covina, California, <laughs> and they. <laughs> And my, I still have this note where my mom wrote, Bobby, uh, Norm from Dial a Band called. He got you a gig for $100. I did that the, sounds great. Yeah, it was for 17 100 bucks. That's what is I fine. mean. That Not sounds now. fantastic. That's gas money, baby. Okay. <laughs> Less uh, so, by the way, thank you for this check. It's after SAG, right? SAG after? <laughs> I'm dyslexic. Uh, so broadcasting. So it didn't work out. I, I took the classes. Back then, you had to get an FCC license. You mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah. And then um, I was reading. I went to audition to read the news on the college radio station, and I told Nicole the signal went out to the parking lot. You know, it's like oh, it it's like lot? one of those airport stations. Half you know, lot, yeah. yeah. So Basically I, did, I didn't get the, I didn't get the gig, man. They said no, you're not right for the station. I said this is I, this, this is, is what theme. I'm doing. So I quit. I'm sorry, I hit the table, and there it goes. Yeah, that's all right. I was thinking more on the lines of, he doesn't hear his, uh, his My cuff buttons links? hitting the, uh, the thing. <laughs> okay. No, you made the reference before. You're absolutely the... right. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. You'll just call each other on everything. And play well, back you know, and he's made it very clear that's what we're doing, yeah. and I'm half autistic, can I so I have this? no yeah. choice but to can I say it this? <laughs> can I say this with love in my heart? Sure. You take anal retentivism. To that next level, thank you. Too for much, that. No, too much. Uh, anyway, I so can't help it. I, I, I said, you know what? I want to be a stand-up, and I literally had like five jobs, and I'm not exaggerating. I worked. I Red Devil Pizza, United Rental. I was a waiter. I was. Uh, I had a gardening business, and the gardening business, I mowed lawns, and I took that money to produce comedy shows at the Ice House in Pasadena. Holy shit! And plus, I was doing a full boat in college. And doing spots wherever I can get them. And on call with dial band Yeah, on call with dial band <laughs> Let me tell you about dial band They're not around. So anyway, that reminds me. I got to tell the I got to drive out to Covina and check. Well, th- they were then. But here's the point. <laughs> when, I get the, when I give advice about performing, I did this talent contest at the Next Time Country 10 weeks in a row. Lost every week. The 10th, the 11th week. I go in, same crappy act. It's not funny. I'm just trying really hard. Just getting stage time, right? I win. And I'm shocked. And I find, I, it was the same judges every week. And I said, what, why? They won you out of here? Yeah, no, I said, why did I win? He said, because you never gave up. Hey. That's you a lesson. never gave up. Wow. So, you know, that, that again, it goes to stage time. So, anyway, so is, I, is I moved. Is that just what they used to say, experience, blah, 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 experience. Nowadays, we're 10, just saying stage hours. time. 10,000 hours. That's it, right? That's where that comes from. Yeah, if you put a – anyone can be a genius if you put enough time in that one subject. The problem is I have lots of things going on, and it's hard to focus sometimes on what I really want to do. But when I, I I like having distractions and then focusing. Mm -hmm. It's I'm a weird cat, man. Left brain and right brain. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I would say so. I create a big mess on my desk. But I'll clean up and make it nice and organized when I'm done. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's some people that just you're yeah. No, at, for me it's oh got my all god. Be, otherwise, I, I don't can't know. believe the cards are color coordinated. <laughs> Look, let me say this: should have different colors, you know. Really? Bob's not funny here. Oh. In the yellow card. <laughs> That's all up here. Bob. Ah. <laughs> <has, laughs> oh. So you were kicked out of your uh, broadcast. Everything. <laughs> 
So I got conformist. So the best part of the story is a year later, I'm working with Fraser Smith, you know, the DJ. Okay. And uh, he said, you know, you should just call into my show. You can be my dumb brother. Oh, I good. said, okay. That's I call your in. character. It's my character. It's a character. <laughs> so I did that. I didn't want I, anyone to think you might actually be Fraser Smith, Smith's brother. I don't care. Let alone believe what you have to believe. Oh, I, I see. Oh, know, I see. You don't hold. Oh, that's the anal retentive part. I see. I try to keep things no, make you sense, and you're like, who the fuck l- cares? L- let me tell you something. You hurt their feelings. I do. I have people come up to me all the time saying, you know, I, I saw you in this, and da, 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 and I just go, yeah, well, thank you very much. Because I when you correct them, they go, no, no, no. I had a guy <laughs> who's so adamant that I opened for Frank Sinatra. I saw you open for Frank Sinatra. I said, you know, that one I would remember. How was I? I, I don't remember Flo and Eddie as much. I would have let that one go. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's no, perpetuate I, that rumor. I finally, <laughs> yeah, and I finally just said to the guy, you know, you're right. Oh. Frank doesn't like me to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? No. <laughs> what? It. Am I going to spend an hour of my life fighting with this guy over my credits? No. no. That's when I thought you finally gave in. I gave in. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> so... I, a year later, Good point. I'm in L.A. I moved to the Valley over here in Vineland. By the was the Beverly Carlin Hotel. Oh, it's right around at Aqua Vista. Yeah. You know what I'm right talking? Around, yeah, right, right around there. there. Which, by the way, is just I didn't know at the time. I lived there for a year. Brady Bunch House. Oh, well, two d- blocks away. Oh, not even. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Didn't know it then. Mm. Well, huge Brady Bunch guy. It's all. Uh, do you know what's going on with it now? Not to take that whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. TLC. They're, they're, yeah, they're yeah. redoing it. It's a yeah. big TV show. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But no, but it was cool because the house does look the same. And it's funny in the opening episode where you see the house, you don't, you don't, you think it's a beautiful valley. It's the fuck, it's the river. The LA river it's is the, the horrible river. It is the backyard. It's cement. Yeah. Which they've been it, saving all that water and recycling it. But, but no, it goes the, out to the, the ocean. The Disney Channel building and everything is behind yeah. it as well now. So I get hired at KLOS Radio because I be, my Collins become so popular get that they, 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 the, the big boss, George Summers, came in. Well, you know, we're going to hire you. And I got hired. And the uh, first six weeks, I did weekends. The first six, six well, were weeks. Were you on of, a different show? This is your own thing now? I had my own show, the Bob Zaney Show. I started on 1 to 5 in the morning on Saturday, not Saturday going to Sunday, or actually Sunday morning. And then they gave me Saturday mornings. And the first book I had, I was number seven in the city, and that wasn't good enough. So they moved me back to overnights. And uh, But the point was, I got hired at KLOS. Wow. So. And that was the first actual professional broadcast. Yeah, and I learned so much. I mean, it was like, I, I, I kind of lied. I didn't know how to run a board as well, like you do. You're like a pro, <laughs> man. I, I have 10,000 hours. I'll tell you, all. the best story of that was, so my first night on the air, they have Steve Downs is this old-time rock and roll DJ. So they have him sit behind me for my first show. He's there. He's got a beer. He's <laughs> drinking a beer. And I screw up on the board. And I go, fuck. And, and it was on the air. Oh, and uh, he said, "You can take your license away." And then we, I went to commercial. He said, ah, "Don't worry, we'll go to the master tape and erase it." And he That's did. the answer. <laughs> he saved my career. Because otherwise, people say, "Hey, I heard that." Mm, no, you didn't. No shit. But the, the beauty of that—what a cover-up, man! Yeah, that Watergate, but, right there. Yeah, a little Watergate thing. Sure. They, the best thing about that was that because it's so late, you can learn. That's how you learn your craft. Yeah. That, but you still have a bunch of nuts calling. I had one guy call. I remember I was doing my Saturday morning show, and I was doing like a character voice. And he said, who's this? He didn't know it was me. I answered the phone. He goes, who's this Bob Zaney? He sucks. He's the worst. Why can't he be like Jim Ladd on KMET? I went, well, sir, you know, he's just a little different and unique in himself. <laughs> defending me, right? And, of course, I hang up the phone. And I'm like going, wow, this sucks. I don't like this at all. <laughs> and I pick up the phone the next call. I go, yes. And he goes, this Bob Zaney's the best. He's the funniest guy I've ever heard in my whole life. I love him. And I went, oh. And that's what I was getting at. It's like, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It yeah. matters, but it doesn't. It's like as you get older, you care, but you don't. Oh, I do know what you mean there. Yeah, yeah and it's fine. It's fine. It's not a bad thing. It's interesting. You know? Yeah, it helps me. There's, it helps me though. I appreciate that. No, you look. You got to care. You, you, you got to know who you are in your heart and what you are, and what other outside influences are thinking you're something. Don't let them get to it. Who care? What well, get to, get on with your life. Agreed. Giddy up. Agreed. Giddy up. Giddy you have you, time. Yeah. You have time to like do the, go on Facebook and post these rants about what? Yeah. Who cares what you think? <laughs> I know. You look like an idiot. I post jokes. 
<laughs> Are you, you're on the, all the socials? All the socials. I'm on the venereal disease. I'm on the <laughs> well, gonorrhea. <laughs> Good grief. Instagram Zany Bob uh, on the Twitter at Bob Zany or at Bob Zany Podcast. I have a great podcast uh, called The Bob Zany Show. I co-host with my wife uh, over 100 episodes. Uh, Stephen Wright, Carrot Top, Billy Gardell, Dave Keckner, a lot of gr- Jimmy Pardo, of course. Of course. Jimmy, Mr. Podcast, Mr. Po- he, he's, he's your show is kind of like his. Is he it? has you, come, but he has you sit in the studio with him. He says, "Don't say anything for 10 minutes." Then he refers to you the whole time. It's kind of like an IQ test. That's <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Okay. Yeah, but you know, you I'm had open, me off to I'm the open side. to suggestions, but, but that we've what we've done, we've tried it all. We tried that no. too in the beginning, and it's just it's no, weird. you don't, it's, it's you don't. Necessary. You guys do your thing, which I think was great because you know, again, I got some more Angry Birds. I'm up to enough to get a new game. <laughs> Thank goodness. <It's> exciting. <laughs> Not playing Angry Birds. I know, for today. I know that it's passe. I don't care. I Who like cares? finding things later. Yeah. I go to I the thrift store that. and buy stuff. I buy books and. You know, the other th- great thing is I remember buying books for like $20, $30, and I never read them. Yeah. And they're on my shelf. Me too. And then I go to the thrift yeah. store, and I get yeah. it for 2 bucks, and I'll read it. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait for a TV season to come out two years later, and oh. I'll save money. We do that just to binge it, so for yeah. the whole sake of it, yeah. Let me ask you that. Is it wrong to uh, binge watch, like, the series 24 and then call it a day? You call get it, it a day? Get it. Uh, yeah. Or is it wrong to binge watch one day at a time? <laughs> hey, <laughs> there's the joke. Okay. I, I think the other one I didn't set up. No, properly. I think you need them both. Yeah, I think I, I think I, one complements the other. I like the duality of it. It's a duality. Mm-hmm. I like that word. Uh, so I don't understand. So you, then, but I, you, I know you as a comedian, but it seemed like you've got a radio career going. So how did uh, that? It's, 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 but I was always doing stand up and doing personal appearances, which the radio helped that. I see. Uh, you right. know, yeah, you had I a was morning a, gig and a night gig. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I was like a, you know, I all of a sudden was had a name value in Los Angeles, so I I moved the headliner way too quick. Oh. You know, Before you I, were ready, you mean? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you but I was name. like forced to be ready. Yeah, because people would buy tickets to come see you. Yeah. And I remember one my first professional week at the Ice House, like 1985, I think. I'm headlining, and there's a, this kid named Dennis Miller middling for me. Mm. <laughs> and him and I were talking because they were treating me like crap at the Ice House because I was a little, I was from there. That was my home club, whatever. I always say the Ice House in Pasadena was my high school. The comedy store was my college, and the improv was my graduate, my, my master's degree. Wow. In clubs. That's, That's how I see it. high praise for this. Yeah. Well, you know, the comedy store, it was, a, I, I went down there at 17 years old, 1979, right out of high school. At three o'clock in the afternoon, you sign up and you wait to see if you get three minutes. I got on that night at midnight. And I remember earlier in that night, I saw Mike Minder. Do you know who Mike Minder I is? I do. He's going to do this show that's oh, is coming he? out. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great guy. Great guy. And I, I worked with him on something forever ago. I can't remember. Well, he's, you people know, know he's him forever. Mind of the Married Men. Yeah. He did Idiocracy, I think. Right? Mike Judge. Oh, shoot. Well, don't, don't, don't judge her. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> My friend. Uh, but no, you worked on uh, Rain Over Me. He did that. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. John yeah. Cheadle and okay, Sam. Okay, that's the one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's a great guy, though. No, a great guy. And he, you know, I went up to him and I said, hey, I'm Bob Zaney. I want to be a comedian, blah, blah, blah. And he kind of like, oh, good luck, whatever. Yeah. And I did my set and uh, it went very well. And he came up, to, he found me and said, hey, you know what? You got something. Do it more. And that was and then I turned that into a speech in my speech class in college. Like you know, motivation, like that for how was I a got motivational where I thing. Yeah. yeah, you know, I try to be as encouraging as possible, but also there's some that just uh, these expectations. I don't know what they expect. Yeah, I had a guy once come up to me. I was in Vegas performing at, at the Tropicana, and he said, "You know, I have a friend. He's funny. He, you know, he should be a comedian." I said, "Well, what should he do?" I said, "Well, you get on stage. You can go to like open mics and get on stage." Oh, he doesn't need to do that. Yeah. I said, well, maybe you can go like to the comedy store or the improv. Oh, he doesn't need to do that. I said, you, know, you should call Bally's. I think they're looking for a headliner. <laughs> because it's like this it's the expectation. Well, he doesn't need to do. Yes, he does. Yeah. There was last year, my wife forced me to watch American Idol. Oh. So I'm watching. And who's the consultant? Bobby from uh, Nashville. I'm Bobby. Don't anyway, know. he's a great guy. Bobby, somebody. He's a famous con- record producer. And these. Uh, the the finalists think you know this is it they've made it right and he says well, are you willing to go to Nashville and work for free for four or five nights a week no and they're staring at him going what do you mean I'm <clears throat> I'm making it and they don't get it yeah they're it's gonna, all people fabricated. are going to forget it's all fabricated also Kelly, Kelly Katy Perry said the best thing 
uh, to a finalist who sang a song, and uh, she said, eh, it was okay. The only reason I'm being tough on you right now, you're in a bubble. Uh, you're in this bubble, and you it. don't understand what yeah. the real world is, has out there. Yeah. It's like what they do to college students now. They protect them to the point where why? Yep. Nobody's ready for the real world. <clears throat> well, they want to change it. It's not going to ever be that way. It's like what we were talking about off air about Mars. Oh, okay. You send people, they're going to bring their crap with them. <laughs> right, because we're not going to change the problem. It. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We're not a utopia. We'll never be. No. You know, the Constitution's perfect. The Bible's perfect. You know what screws it up? Man. What? It's true. Church is just a, a building. <coughs> Can we Agreed. pause my testicles now? Uh, <laughs> let's get the wide. I've got to get to the wide for that one. <coughs> I get a little emotional. Uh, anyway, so, and I did Bob and Tom for 18 years. I did the Zany Report with them every week. And it's funny, people ask me, when's the first time I did the Bob and Tom show? They were syndicated out of, Los, out of Indianapolis. Okay. Big show in the Midwest. And they got to L.A. in a few places, but... I did in 1984, and I said they liked me so much they had me back in 94, and uh, <laughs> it's true, and then I did the show a few times, and I had already been doing the Zany Report on the radio station, and then Tom said, we'll give it a try, and, and the rest is history. Wow. But you seems like, I, I, I in my mind, I'm, I've been so linear for me, but you actually were doing everything all of sort of at the same time. You have to, yeah. you know, and in you being, uh, you know, in, in that publicist world, you know, you have to, as the client, you want to put them on and you want them to shine, correct? Yes. You don't want them to be, I'm so tired. Mm. And I used to be that way when I started out. And then I said, you know what? I have to be a professional. So I would drink a lot of coffee. I'm awake. And I go Turn in these on, morning shows at 5 a.m. and just knock them dead. And they, they are shocked, <laughs> you know, because I'm working nights, if you think about it. Right. So you should be groggy. But you should be groggy. But you also should be, you know, I think there's a, a great uh, saying about just, you know, show up on time with a good attitude. Yeah. Now, my attitude can be. Mis- Hit or miss. <laughs> no, it's not that. You know what it is? It's real. I just keep, I yeah. keep it down, and then I do my thing. People will freak. I remember I did a show in Atlantic City for this new guy at the Borgata, and I had flown three flights from Wisconsin to get to Philly to take the That's shuttle to Atlantic City. I get there in time to take a shower. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like this in the great room. Going, uh, and the guy just met me for the first time, and he, he's going, okay, well, have a fun show. I go out and destroy. And I come back in the green room, and he, he said, Man, you scared me. I didn't know if you were able to pull this off. He said, I was conserving my energy. What do you want? Professional. Yeah. Right. Right. I know That's what I'm doing. Goes. Yeah. Sorry you don't. Yeah. So. Do you run into that often? What? That they don't know what they're doing? No. The uh, energy control. You, 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 I was going to say this a few minutes ago. You probably are a master of energy control for a room and getting an audience yeah. to go with whatever you yeah. want to do. Uh, one on one, I I I sometimes have issues, or you know, in small groups, is that an issue for you at all? No, no, you're just comfortable as you. I I always tell comedians uh, who ask my advice, I became a better comic after the show when I sold merch because uh-huh. I had to be somewhat real, and I wasn't afraid to talk to people. You had to talk. And to it, you know, when mm. you start, some comics, and I was this way, you didn't want to look at the audience, you want to see them. It's like. I'll look at them. I don't care. I'll walk through them. Yeah. You know, I, uh, that's, part and of I it, get recognized yeah. now because, you know, I've done it long enough and people will see me and I, I do a little jab with them or a joke or something, but mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of the audience anymore. But also when I'm done with the show, I'm done with the show. I don't need to, I don't need any more, you know, Hey, tell me I was fine. No meet and greet after to fuck well, you up. I, you? Well, I, I'll do that too. If that's part of the gig, but I'm just Once saying you're done a, working, you're done. Working. You're done working. It's done. I'm not, I'm not a monkey in a cup. Okay. Even they get a break. I had, this but how do you tell somebody that without coming across as a genuine? Uh, insult? I agree with you, but I, I, it's, I, I so. come, I say it on how I'm feeling at that moment. I go, you know, I just did a show. I just talked to 300 people. So I'm kind so of you beat lay it right out. now. I'm going to, I move on, but thank you for the offer. And they don't want to buy, they don't want to buy Bob's any to drink. They want to buy the comedian a drink so they can tell their friends went out with a comedian last night from the funny hut. Right. <laughs> By the way, who books the funny hut? <laughs> I'd love to know. It's, I think it used to be the finger hut. So oh, boy. That catalog business went down. <laughs> finger nut, wasn't it? No. Finger, <laughs> finger hut? Is that what it was? Well, I think I, it was think I always misread hut. it. I don't know. <laughs> no, you finger, no, you finger your nuts is what oh, you did. And that's why you had to get out of broadcast. something up. 
jeez. By the way, this format with the radio and the TV component. What do you think? Did that in Guam. You did? 1988. Well, you beat me. No, I'm just saying that's how small the island is. <laughs> that, that was their TV was the DJ. Oh, you're serious? Yeah, I'm serious. In fact, I, prefer, I actually bombed the Guam before Kim Jong-un can. Hell. <laughs> Thank you. It's a territory, by the way. It's not a state, but I count it. Guam. Guam. I remember when I was a kid, Levi Jeans, where the commercials on television were, uh, it, it, oh, screw, I screwed up. Never mind. Forget it. It was Prague. Erase it. <laughs> it was Prague? Yeah, I screwed yeah, up. Yeah, I could see how you could mix up no, Prague no. with Guam. This, I, was trying to, I, was trying, I was trying to illustrate how little I knew about it, and I succeeded wonderfully, although not as intended. <laughs> well, you know what? You tried. I'm sure you'll go back and erase this on the master nope. tape. No way. No. We don't Good. do that. So Guam, though, in the 70s, they still had Japanese hiding in the cave sink, and the war was going <laughs> on. Not. They found it. That's true. I remember hearing stories. It's I not, remember reading it's not, stories. You know, the, the, they still these, to this day supposedly people on the There probably are still is someone. The war. How do they know? It's like, you know, prisoners of war, if they, you know, just say it's one American in and, and North Korea, they've probably still got prisoners of war there that we don't know about okay. from the conflict. <laughs> okay? But anyway, the point is, after a while, think about this. You're not speaking English to anyone. You forget English. Hmm. You know, it's it's practicing that movie Idiocracy. Did you see that? Uh, that Mike yeah. Judge did. Oh, it it, it says it all. Mm -hmm. How we can erase a generation of information just through stupidity. It's happening. Through stupidity, it is. And it is. I know. I Lack know. of awareness. I there is something I I know from experience, and like some it was Wiki Wikipedia was scrubbed of everything I knew, so I felt crazy mm. for about a day. Yeah, the internet. It's all a, the internet is a is a river. Well, you yeah. know, I, I heard this, and I, I I had to look for myself. President Lincoln, what party was he with? I would I would guess Republican. Did you Republican, know? I. It doesn't uh, say that on Google. It it's, doesn't. It's, it's National Union Party or something. Oh wow! I forgot there was different stuff back then. No, he was a Republican. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're calling. Oh, I see your point. They, oh they my gosh. don't want them to think that yeah. maybe Republican did something good. Uh, now, if you can do that. You right. switch anything. Well, that's the whole you, point. You there switch is no... everything. You're right. It so doesn't go it's... back until they turn it all off, and they're not planning on turning it all off. No, you, that genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. Pandora's box has been opened. How many more metaphors do you need? <laughs> I don't like a good How metaphor. much time do you think I like, you have I, left? By Bob the way, Zanny? I like irony. I have a lot of ironies in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> How much long do you think this whole civilization has left? I don't know, but I don't think it's 12 years. I don't think man's that powerful to destroy it. Look, every time you walk down the street and you see a weed coming out of a crack. We're, we're not going to destroy the earth, but we may destroy mankind, I think. Well, I think. And a lot they, of life on the on the planet. They just had, uh, it was interesting, I was hearing, uh, the earth, first Earth Day was 1970, and all the predictions of words, 10 to 15 years, it's over. This is 1970. That's what it was, 10 to 15 back yeah, then? Yeah. If, if we, we don't, don't do anything. If we don't do anything. Right. But then recycling And yes, the, the environment was screwed up back then. I grew up, I grew up in West Covina. We had smog alerts. Yeah, so I was going to say the smog. Yeah. So that's been cleaned up and stuff. I think there's a balance you can find in all of it. You can't just get rid of airplanes and cows. You can't do that. Right. It, it, sounds, it sounds nutty, you know, but if that's what you believe in it. Well, I don't it, think there's any one answer, right? I mean, it's going to have to be like a million answer. little things we have to do. No, and I've been recycling ever since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, there's certain little things we can all do. Yeah, don't we, litter. It's so silly, the little things you can do. To oh, just really? Be, just be responsible yourself. The kids yourself. aren't taught that. I live in between two schools, and all they do is throw trash along the way. We actually had, my wife told me I was on the road, and she said these parents drove up waiting for their kids to get out of class, eating food out of styrofoam pack. Oh. They threw it on our lawn. That's crazy. And my wife went and said, pick that up. And she got mad. at The person who threw it got mad at my wife. This is our lawn. And so they, so what happens is they let the kids litter. The school's just covered in trash. Yeah. And uh, please tell Michelle Obama they're not eating healthy either. It's, it's not like, you <laughs> know, weed germ. Top. That's where yeah, my red flag was. It's not weed germ wrappers. So <laughs> my wife asked a, a teacher, said, why don't you have the kids pick up the trash like we did? Yeah, yeah that would be I, that would be my answer. No, we don't want to single them out. Okay, but, but no, 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 it gets better, Jay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to dominate no, your no, show. No, no, please, please. The best part of it is <laughs> the school sends out a a, a a memo to the whole neighborhood. Hey, everybody, let's clean up our school on Saturday. Asking Stop. The, the neighbor, they ask yeah. the neighborhood to and do it. And then the good the Samaritans show up and do it. Who are paying ten thousand dollars in yeah. property taxes and who don't have kids paying for that school? No. 
So, and then you see the stuff on the outside of the school, the, the condom wrappers and the needles and the pot bottles and the booze bottles. What part of town are you in? Uh, it's called uh, Lake Balboa, which is Spanglish for Van Nuys. <laughs> I was going to say, I know the area. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you live. I, you're right. Yeah, I, I see right. here. It's a really nice little block. Just go walk five feet. You're exactly there, right. That there one, is only a, a block great or two over. twilight zone where these aliens are coming to conquer Earth, but he's, they start at one block. And they turn the neighbors on each other because they're all scared. Mm -hmm. And then the aliens are in this ship. And then they pull back the camera. And you see all these quiet neighborhoods around it. He says, this is how we start it. And you go to the next one. And you go to the next one. Yeah, we don't have to do anything. No, we don't. And, you know, Twilight Zone was a great show because it had a moral to the story at the end. And most of the morals were like, hey, I, you know, this guy wished to, all he wanted to do is read books. The last man on earth. That's Remember Burgess, Burgess Meredith? Burgess Meredith. I love that one. Yeah. And he cracks his glasses. The glasses break on the stairs. That's Done. the worst. Yeah. That one broke my heart, man. Yeah. Because you look like a bookworm. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you um, really, you do, really, you know what you are? You just, you take stuff so personally. You got but anger I, management, man. Do you think? It's work for Charlie Sheen. I think that look. I'm okay. I think that everyone thinks I do because of whatever I look like whenever but I do. But you know what? I, I have that same thing on my face. Because truly don't, inside, I'm... Read me feeling pretty fine you know i think being a comedian it's tough because i, I will joke a lot and and then if i stop joking go they for, well first they'll say why do you joke all the time aren't you ever serious <laughs> and then i'm serious and go what's wrong why yeah, aren't you well, joking? yeah boy you can't the minute win. i stop smiling i'm angry There's yeah people that, and i'm like i'm not it's i true. just and then I, I smile and they're like you smile to beg i'm like <laughs> i can't win <laughs> no you can't no one can win that's that was actually the name of one of my CDs. I can't. I just can't win, Bay Bay. <laughs> uh, a little negative, but anyway. Uh, so, but it's like again, it goes back to you know who you are. You treat people as kindly as you can, but there's a thing called boundaries in life. You know, when you're after a show, people will want photos. And it was funny. I was, I was, I don't know what I was watching. Or no, I was reading the Jimmy Walker book. Oh, and he's talking about how Jimmy they Walker. treat people. Mm -hmm. Jimmy and I are doing shows together now on the road called so Ebony and Irony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a marketing person. I'm a dream. I, I come up with these great ideas. Anyway. I love Jimmy. I used to work with him on Everybody Hates Chris. He's a great, oh, really? great guy. Yeah. Jimmy's the what best a wonderful guy. guy. But also he has his side. He's been around a long time. Yes. And he's a great a great guy to talk to about the show business, you know. And I've known him for – it was interesting. And Ray Combs, remember Ray Combs who hosted Fam Family, Family Feud? Family Feud and yeah. not, not around anymore. No, he's not around anymore. And that, that's another story in itself. But he was a Did really you know good, Ray? Is that oh, why? Oh, yeah, he was a good friend oh, I'm of sorry. Oh. And, uh, Tragic story. But Ray Combs uh, had a comedy club in Cincinnati, and oh. he had booked uh, Jimmy Walker there, and Jimmy had to cancel, so they sent me – this is before 9-11 – which, by the way, is my birthday. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, was going to bring that. Yeah. I know I was going to bring that up. But Not anyway, he, they sent me Jimmy Walker's ticket. You know, so, so I got to go. fly on Jimmy Walker's ticket. They didn't care. Oh, that's so funny. So I, you know, I tracked down his address and I sent him the the receipts. I said, "You might as well get the frequent flyer miles on it." And by the way, the flight that didn't sink, you drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's some notes in the system. There's some, yeah, <laughs> there's some notes. Can you imagine being able to fly on Jimmy Walker's ticket That's hilarious. now? No. I mean, now I'm like TSA pre-checked. I'm clear. I'm California Real ID, U.S. passport. My name is just the letter J, so it's always Oh, an really? Issue a problem. Yeah, it really is. And the ID That's says it, but but the it doesn't matter because the tickets, you know what I mean? It's J dot or whatever, and the, or sometimes the ticket won't take just the letter. Well, so my it's wife's name issue. is Aaron O'Connor, and the hyphen doesn't show up sometimes in, uh, on computers and stuff. So and it's like can, one. It can be weird. Yeah. yeah. So I know that pain. Oh, All right, look Bob at that Zaney. time. My yeah, dog. no. I, that's Boy, it. you let, really let me go. And this is my dog, Frankie, everybody, <laughs> on my phone. He's a Dalmatian and pointer, so he's a pointation. Every time I kind of want to just give it a second, and then I'm like, well, I'll wrap it up. You kind of keep on going. So it's I got a professional. Go. I, I got a nap coming it's up. My... Yeah, no, it's good. We're, we're well over our time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure none of this is going to make the air. Is this on? Everything does. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> Thank you for being here, well, Bob Let Zaney. me uh, sign the release, and I can go. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can go. There's no release. What do you, you got want. coming up tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're off. We're going to be at the Hunziger Bullet Mustang 50th anniversary thing that's going on down there. That's going to be fun. And then Friday we're up at Newcomb's Ranch for Breakfast Club. 
So that's pretty good. And then next week, there's a whole bunch more stuff going on. Bob Zaney, thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me, guys. Mrs. Thank Ryan, you. I love you very much. Bob Zaney, we love Aww. you very much. We love everybody at home. Please love one another. See you at Newcomb's Ranch on Friday or next week. I guess I'm the reality chaser. <laughs> Drop my free pencil. <laughs> 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 gotta get something. I gotta get my pencil out of this.